Hey guys, Dom Kane here for Sonic Academy with Bitwig for Beginners Level 2. In this series we build upon all the skills we developed in Level 1. We start looking at things like send and return effects in more detail and then applying effects like reverb and delays to drums and leads and chords, uh, effects crashes, uh, applying effects chains, then cutting out frequencies and dealing with which frequencies and where, uh, the basics on how to use a compressor and when, and then we look into more detail in sidechain compression, uh, the mix down, any final tweaks and a final master ready to play out publicly. So head over to sonicacademy.com and I'll see you there. Right, so I've opened up the project uh, that we last had open doing level one. If you haven't done level one, please go and check that somewhere on sonicacademy.com. Um, if you have done level one, congratulations and welcome to level two. Uh, it has, however, been a few months since I recorded that first course, so let me just show dashboard help about version 3.3.3 uh, I know that I was on version 2 point something last time I think um, but I just wanted to clarify that anybody who may have be following these two courses you know one straight after the other um, you know a few months has passed and in that few months we've gone 
through however many versions it is it couldn't have been two point something it must have been three point two or something but um there's nothing majorly different that's going to affect the course that I'm aware of uh you know browsers still over here channels are over here I can still tap to my mixer screen uh and see everything I want over here so uh, I don't think it's going to affect anything but just to let you know that if there is anything that is ever so slightly different uh, that's the reason why so uh, just to very quickly recap uh, the the last course uh, we put in some uh, uh, dummy clips over here that are just empty just so that we can write intro verse pre-chorus chorus, chorus etc uh, we have the kick drums, which is using uh, Sonic Academy's Kick 2. Um, we also have some snares and claps, some drum loops. So we learnt to uh, import drum loops and uh, manipulate those. Uh, we have some hats as well. So we learnt to use the sampler and just dropping a sample in there and how to use that. Uh, we also learnt to use the drum machine and what else have we done uh, we also used the polysynth and i believe oh no another polysynth was it the pads nope that was phase four okay i could have sworn we used anna somewhere amongst all of these not that it matters uh yep we've also used the drum machines and yeah that's about it basically so i won't go through that in too much detail but we got a very basic track uh, together over here and we had a breakdown that hit there so that's all well and good uh, the next thing we're gonna look at uh, is using uh, the sends and returns so for example, if I look at the kick drums and I head over to the mixer tab, uh, you can see that, you know, it, there are any clips there, but that any devices will be here. And then any devices after that, this is the um, direction of the chain of audio, I suppose, represented here or down here. You can see the full devices. So we've got kick to over here which then the next thing in the chain is filter so if I wanted to add some reverb then I can click on the plus sign type in reverb and away we go we've got reverb now if I just solo these drums and go let's go over here just so I know there are some kicks so you can hear the reverb in action You've got a mix level here so we can make it 100% dry or 0% wet if you wish so it's just a completely dry signal basically it's not it's essentially being bypassed uh, or I can make it 100% wet which means we have none of the original sound and all of the reverbed sound and you can mix in between like that however what I'm gonna do is go over to here and you can see s1 effect uh, this is basically a, a send channel so it, the s1 stands for send one uh, if you right click over here uh, you can add effect track so we can have s2 effect and so on and so forth so we can add a bunch of these in if we want now what I'll do is I'll go into S1 which currently if you can see here in the devices is empty so I'm going to click on the plus sign start typing reverb and away we go now you can see this defaults to 100% wet and if I hit play again you won't hear it in action But what you will have noticed is every time I added one of these channels, a new dial has appeared here in the mixer. So now I can turn this dial up. And you can see the signal coming into this reverb device. So 
so there's I mean there's a bunch of reasons why you would or wouldn't use these uh, send channels um, first of all I think the number one reason that that most people will use send channels is because if for example you've got some reverb and you know you're going to be using this reverb on multiple channels uh, let's be honest it probably wouldn't be the kicks because you don't generally put reverb on kicks but let's say for example you know you wanted to add a touch of reverb to the hi hats and you wanted uh to add a touch to a couple of the synths or whatever um certainly in the in the older days of music production or computer music production you know reverbs have traditionally been quite cpu heavy uh, so it would be much easier to have one reverb channel over here and then decide all right okay well i want to add a touch of reverb tiny amount of reverb to my hats and then i want my chords to be drenched in reverb for example uh, and so i can just play through those uh, and assign as many of the instruments as i want into that reverb system knowing that the reverb timing is all synchronized across the board then uh, sometimes it can be a bit odd uh, if for example you have a very short reverb on one instrument and then a very long reverb on another instrument um, you know obviously there's caveats to all of that as well because sometimes that can sound great it all depends on on what kind of instrument and what vibe you're going for in the track but i don't want to complicate things too much essentially the the first and foremost the biggest reason is just cpu saving uh, you know you'll notice sometimes you know you start using say a, a saturation plugin on you know almost all of your drums or your bass or whatever if that's the case then it's much easier just to have a uh, a send channel here the other reason and and this is perhaps almost more important in today's uh edm style productions um sidechain compression is a huge deal for music producers um it's something that we use inherently in in almost everything we do uh, whether it be very subtle or very obvious um, but essentially it's that it's that pumping sound that we hear in tracks where you know the synth pads may wrap around the kick drums or something um, and that's usually uh, done through applying some reverb you know let's say for example uh, you know you've got you've added some reverb uh, to the tom drums or something uh, you could then add some sidechain compression after the reverb and it still allows the your original toms to be at full level and uninterrupted by the kicks uh, while the reverb tail of it then gets sidechained. Uh, so that's just something that we'll probably cover much, much later on. Um, but yeah, just understand there are there are several different reasons for using send channels so let's have that reverb as is uh where was i sending that let's just chuck the kicks on it for now oh, and solo them right so i've just tuned that by ear just just uh for argument's sake so i'm going to call that a long reverb two and a half seconds is pretty long uh, and we'll take it off that now and now in s2 effect we will add another reverb and this time we're gonna have a much much shorter so uh i'm still gonna just chuck the kicks in it for now but i'm gonna name this reverb long and name this reverb short for obvious reasons that I shouldn't need to explain. So here I've made it much, much shorter and I'm going to bring the size down as well. So if you imagine, you know, you're in a, uh, you know, a normal room in a house and you clap your hands you'll quite often hear a bit of a reverb in there um you know if you don't have much furniture or art on the walls or whatever then you know it'll be somewhat reverby and that reverb because you're in a small room will be a very short time um so generally if you're ever putting reverb 
on things like uh, hi hats, then you know you would you'd be more inclined to to give it some very short reverb, basically, uh, because drums and things are, are usually. Uh, well, for example, you don't you don't tend to listen to a drummer in a huge church or a big hall, uh, you know, a big cavernous space. Uh, you don't tend to find drummers there very often. They tend to be in much smaller rooms. So our, our ears are just used to hearing drums. If there's ever any reverb on drums, then it's usually a very, very short, uh, roomy type reverb. Uh, so I'm just going to hit play on these hats over here and then tab back and hopefully we'll hear them. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to apply some short reverb. There we go, that'll do. So I'm, again, I'm doing it by ear. I hit, what What was that, minus eight-ish dB. Uh, so it doesn't need to be a huge amount of reverb in there. We're not looking, you know, we're not doing this for uh, what I would call a creative decision. It's more of a technical decision just because those hi-hats just sound a bit um, a bit more lively, I guess, with a tiny little bit of reverb on there. Uh, so I'm going to grab these hats because these are the hats from the chorus. So they're going to be essentially the same. And I'm going to take that to minus eight and then go over to those hats and have a listen yeah they're just really subtle in the background so again I'm just going to leave that as is for now uh, but if for example we head over to uh, yeah I think these chords are asking for some reverb yeah definitely so what we're going to do is tab across to the mixer again and we're on chords we've soloed the channel and we've got reverb long over here and again going by ear what did i do there oh. would you believe it uh near enough let's go minus 8 db again that seems to be the the sweet spot for me where it's just a bit subtle but uh, not not hidden and there we go I'm happy with that and I'm gonna hit save uh, that I think kind of covers uh, the essentials of send channels like I say they're really handy just being able to dial these in and knowing that you've got a long reverb and a short reverb uh, in a lot of my tracks personally I have a chain setup where I might have say some reverb and then a delay unit and maybe some saturation on that as well and then I'll, I'll send sort of you know most of my synths will sort of go through that same channel um, because you get the exact same effect applied to all of those synths that you choose then uh, and it's just a much much easier way of working uh, it also means that when for example I want to later on offer remix stems or if I want to bounce down the stems and give them to someone for a mix down or anything along those lines it means that they can then control the levels of those send channels because they'll be separate stems so it means you can listen to them dry or or wet or whatever it is in the mix later on and when when a mastering engineer gets their hands on it they can go actually i'll just bring that down a touch uh, it just makes life a lot easier later on uh, so there we go that is send and return <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching, we really appreciate the support from you guys. If you liked this video then you know, smash that like button and if you want to be notified about new content, hit the subscribe and the bell notifications. Peace!